Ladies, I love us, but with all due respect, take a bath. The only thing more important than looking the part is smelling the part. Sure, it's laborious to smell good at all times or to shower more than once a day, but would you rather shower twice a day or work in food service? I'll wait. Still here? <laughs> okay, great. Thank you so much for tuning into my channel. I'm Up at a Unicorn, and this is The Scent of Seduction. So, y'all know I'm a former globe travel, globe trotting traveler type of person, and I've learned a lot from different cultures that I feel uh, contributes to me being a unicorn um, heavily. It's. Um, my cultural mixology that really makes me an odd person to uh, behold. And not just odd like in a bad way, but also preferable. So something I learned about the more religious Muslim women who abide by the ancient scriptures of their culture is that they are not allowed to wear perfume to the mosque or anywhere in public. It is only for their husbands. It can only be worn in their homes with men who are called mahram, or in other words, are muharam for them. So again, this is the Arabic language for, is he your brother? Is he your uncle? Is he your dad? Is like, is he related to you to the point where either he's married to you or can never marry you like your son, okay? So literally, they can't wear perfume to the mosque or in public period and the texts of their scriptures actually say the prayers will not be accepted by Allah if they wear perfume to the mosque until they remove it. Because the seduction of smell is powerful enough to coax a man to betray himself with sexual sins that make him forget himself, his wife, his status, and even his God temporarily. Yes, men are this impressionable. And I know we have this conversation where it's like, it's not my fault if you can't control yourself. And you're right, it's not. However, this is about seduction. And this is about a woman's feminine power and your way of creating the reality and manifesting the reality you want. And I want to focus on that, if you will. In the Middle East... A seductress can be a woman whose face and full body you have never seen. But eyeliner and perfume is how she comes about her victims. I have seen Muslim women walk past men in full naqab, which is a garment they use to cover not merely what the standard hijab covers, but all of the body except for the eyes. I've seen men distracted by the scent of women's conditioner after a good shower when they're, they're not showing anything but their eyes and some eyeliner and they smell good. Maybe the Saudi Arabian heat hit them in a way where there's a light sweat but not a funk and you can smell that conditioner and it's just, ooh, even if it's just Aussie, <laughs> Aussie hydration, herbal essences, they're just floored. Oh my goodness, she smells so good. So much so that I've seen men just smell a woman and see how she walks and then inquire about her as in if she's single or not for marriage after the prayer, after a holiday, after a get together. Just it's behold the power of scent. The combination of sensual sense on a mysterious woman is too much to bear for the heterosexual man without exception, without exception. If he gives you the double take as in looks at you more than once, ladies, we know what's on his mind. Indeed, there was a study done with sweaty men and women wherein they were able to shower, exercise, then exchange t-shirts by scent alone, you guys. They chose for themselves partners that they were physically and emotionally compatible with, even down to personal values. Do you follow? <laughs> awesome. I'm going to link a, a, 
I'm going to link a similar study below so that you guys can actually see it with your eyes, like these women picking up these sweaty shirts and sniffing them and like, uh, right? And like, you know, smelling him, him smelling her. Now, of course, that's the height of chemistry, right? When people say, oh, you've got to have chemistry, right? That's something related more to pheromones secreted, which is very natural. But when you want to fake or force attraction, wash your body, cleanse your mouth. And now that, you know, everyone's wearing masks everywhere, you should know why it's so important to cleanse your mouth because you are going to smell your breath and your mouth and your teeth and your tongue more so than anyone else now. So invest in a tongue scraper. Really clean your mouth, really floss your teeth. Like you can have brush your teeth and your tongue, but the meat stuck in your teeth is so rotten, it gives you a smell. Okay, so when you want to figure force attraction, you wash your body, cleanse your mouth, and invest in a dark, musky perfume that has staying power. Okay, um, here's the deal I would allow Bath and Body Works, things like Moonlit Path. But if you smell like anything from the fruity variety of Victoria's Secret, it's to the back of the class. You go face the wall and I mean, dunce hat. Don't do this. It's tacky to walk around smelling like high school. Teen Spirit is an iconic song. We love you, Kurt Cobain. Rest in peace. Uh, But not so much of an iconic smell, okay? (laughs) You want Teen Spirit on the radio, but not in your body. It's better to smell like barely anything, really. It's better to smell like cheap ivory soap after a, after a bath than it is to smell like something super cheap and fruity. Of course, when well, you want to go for the kill, <laughs> and I use that word lightly, okay, you guys. We're not like really trying to victimize men here. We're just trying to empower women. So when you want to go in for the kill, oil-based perfumes or ouds, and that's another, like, oud has this letter from the Arabic language that is ayn, and we don't really have that in English. So in English, we would just say oud, O-U-D, right? So when you really want to go in for the kill, you use these oil-based perfumes with musky scents because they're captivating. They, um... When you wear an oud and you get warm, the smell only gets stronger. And I don't mean stronger like how an alcohol-based perfume is like, you know, (laughs) makes you cough when you spray it. I mean stronger like when you walk past somebody, they're going to smell you even more on a warm day than they would on a cold day. Uh, the, The smell expands somehow. Right. But obviously, like when you don't know about oud or you don't know how to shop these oils or oil based perfumes, and especially when, when you can't afford a four hundred dollar bottle of a uh, dossier, <laughs> I recommend doing things around your home that become your base scent. I'm putting that in air quotes, I'm your quote unquote base scent. OK. We all know people who smell like their homes, whether it's spicy, fishy, greasy, musty, etc. We all know people who smell like the inside of their house. Now, something I learned from the incredibly desirable women of Somalia is to burn bhor. And I don't know what it, <laughs> I don't know what it is with me and all this Arabic for this upload, but like Bahur is like um, I, I guess you could relate it to incense. So as an African American, I've always been a burner of incense and sage. However, these incense sticks are made a bit more cheaply and have less staying power than than something like Bahur. So sure, you know, my sage is the best, you know, California quality, but after burning it. I smell more like an apothecary than a seductress, and that's not what we want. So, as you burn your bakhur after cooking, cleaning, etc., your curtains, your carpets, your cushions, your clothing will quote-unquote learn to retain the smell, so much so that even after laundry, and I do recommend using like an unscented um, laundry soap, 
like something free and clear okay just because over time it's it's better for you to have less of these chemicals up against your skin your skin is your body's largest organ and yes you are absorbing what is in your fabric softener and what is in your laundry soap to to a very small degree but over time it's substantial to the point where for some people like tide has caused cancer for some people allegedly let me say that in my video okay allegedly right so when you burn behold after cooking and cleaning and after like the 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 materials and your house start to retain um, that scent so much so that even after you wash them, there's still a hint of the smell left over. And that's what you want. You're, you are essentially smoking yourself out, so to speak. So you know the way a smoker just can't seem to smell right? Like when a person smells cigarettes, you can smell it on their fingers, their breath, their hair. That's the exact way you won't seem to be able to smell wrong when you pick this up as a habit. I will, um, I'll link you to some behold down below, but I'm telling you, in so many different, um, East African households, because, you know, I'm, I hail from Seattle. It's like the number two or three location in America for, uh, Somali refugees. Um, so they're all in Minnesota <laughs> and then between Seattle and, uh, Ohio, uh, cities in Ohio is where they go, right? And then, you know, maybe some other places, but this is not about geography <laughs> or demographics. This is about you. But I'm telling you, I've been to Somali household because they're all cooking with like onions every day. I mean, the whole house smells like onions. The whole house smells like scallions. The whole house smells like meat. The whole house, right? And then some people will just leave the house that way. And then you get these rumors like, oh, you know, Africans, you know, they smell like spices. Or, you know, like some of my favorite Ethiopian spices that like make a uh, what and, and jutter. It's like, oh, this is sour. This is bad. Why do they, right? But the same women from the same culture who make the same same food will have you following them around, you know, a grocery store because they smell so good. And the difference is that she cooks with all her windows open and then she burns coal and puts behold on the top of it. Or, you know, if she's a little bit more mo modern, then she has like a behold, like a candle warmer type of thing where the behold can like smell up the house without smoking out the house. But I honestly do recommend smoking out the house again, because your goal is to have that staying power of a smoker, right? And that's what Behold does for you. So you're just always going to smell that way. So long as you've had a bath and your armpits and your breath aren't doing something weird or your head, right? Because people, you know, your head can smell bad, okay? <laughs> Especially if you've got thick, full hair. Um, but you're always going to, that's going to be your resting smell. And you want this. You need this. We like this. We love this. So exactly the way the smoker can't seem to smell right, you won't be able to smell wrong when you pick this up as a habit. Now, some scents are amazing, but they're disagreeable to you or on you, right? For example, I smell so good. And the original Dolce and Gabbana perfume slash lotion, like their original scent you know, with like the red top with the gold trim, uh, the clear glass bottle. But my mother spilt, smells better in their light blue collection. Citrus smells really do a lot for her, but on me, I'm telling you, the smells won't complete themselves and I just smell like lemons I just smell like lemons and light blue but she smells like the actual and in, intent behind the perfume right so citrus based smells work for her but they don't for me and they also don't have very much staying power on me like I'll end up not smelling like it a few hours later whereas she can apply that perfume once in a day and it stays on her so so I say this to say what do you do when you do not yet know what your body chemistry is compatible with in terms of scent, you go with what works in general. Now, here's my gift to you, okay? <laughs> here's my free gift. <laughs> there is one scent that no man disagrees with. Vanilla. The more you know, right? I mean, so basic, right? 
Now, vanilla is, is certainly not my most favorite smell, but it is one of the least disagreeable smells we have on the planet, right? Men nearly unanimously are attracted to and seduced by the scent of warm vanilla activated by a woman's neck, bosoms, and other places where you've got thin skin because it's that blood circulation activating that perfume or that scent. So if you must go with a cost-effective smell, gather some vanilla things for yourself, some French vanilla scented soap, some warm vanilla scented deodorant, some classic vanilla scented body sprays, perfumes, conditioners, etc. Until you're just, whatever you reach into, it's scented with vanilla because you literally, literally smell good enough to eat in vanilla. Again, it's a natural earthy smell that is hardly denied by anyone. So of course, in a perfect world where you can afford, like I said, a $400 bottle of dossier, like <laughs> go get it, sis, because no uh, people are going to be like, I mean, if you're ready for Pepe Le Pew style stalkers, okay, dossier. But in the event that you're not able these are some of the best things that you can do. So I'm going to link the study below or a similar study to the t-shirt smelling and also to some behold, right? Because I know a lot of us are not as uh, culturally competent as I have been blessed to become by merit of traveling. So um, I'm going to link those things below and talk to me about it. Like, talk to me in the comments about the people who you've met in your life who just smell so good. And sometimes it's just their lotion. There was this OG lotion called like cherry almond oatmeal or something. And I mean, it was just my favorite smell as a child. And I remember just like any grown woman who smelled like it, right? Because breasts will contain a smell more than a man's pecs will, right? More than just flat pe pectoral muscles. So I would just sit in the lap and stay close to or up under the arm of women who were using this lotion and everyone was using it. It was very common, but it became such a comforting smell to me and I just kind of clung to it. So scent is so important that it can make you appear more attractive than you really are. So if your face is a good five, average at best, right? Because there's nothing wrong with being average. That scent will kick you up a few notches. If he can't get enough of smelling you, he's going to want to touch you. And his mind is going to go all kinds of places because of how you smell. And again, you can be drop dead gorgeous, but if you are musty or you have certain body parts that smell like your feet. I I um, was in college and I brought a friend over um, to this to this place with all these frat guys like they were like six or seven roommates living in one place. And when she took off her shoes, he could smell her feet because she wasn't wearing socks and they were just so over it. And she was, you know, pretty exotical, biracial, whatever, but they were just like, man, nah. Right? It matters. It matters. So, like, share, comment, subscribe. I am a petite unicorn and I am am out of here hey when is y'all gonna invite me to one of y'all parties man the most terrifying thing on planet earth to uncle sam is white brown and black combining cookouts slash parties you guys bring your food for sure bring your food we'll bring the bullshit we'll bring the four-wheelers and the mud and the games and the crazy stuff and after we get done eating and mudding and getting crazy and having fun and you teach me how to dance we find out you love our women, and we love yours. And we're dapping each other up, having a fucking good time, being friends like we always should have been. Next, we're going to go to the cornfield, shoot some tannerite.
compare weaponry. And Uncle Sam's in the tree line, and when he sees Uzi slash Tech 9, Machete, and AR-15 hanging out together, being friends, finding out how much we have in common that they've hid from us, he sees a three-way toast between a glass of cognac, tequila, and Kentucky bourbon, and a clash of newfound respect, and we're like, fuck yes. Uncle Sam is scared. And I get chills just thinking about it.